Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. So one question that seems to come up again and again in my comments is what are your graphic settings? Your videos look so real, what are your settings? Now one reason I've been reluctant to make this video is that my settings have kind of been in flux for some time and couple that with moving from a 1440p monitor to a 4K TV, I've struggled to nail down a set of refined graphic settings. So today I figured we'll go through the graphics menu and try and figure out where the sweet spot is, that point where you're getting the most frames without sacrificing on the visuals. So for reference, my system is a AMD Ryzen 5 5600X and an Nvidia 3070, and I have 32 gig of RAM, uh, it's 3600 MHz CL16. It's always difficult to take someone else's settings as like a hard and fast rule, just blindly applying it to your system. So rather than telling you what your systems should be, we're going to look at the graphic settings together, see which uh, levers are the most effective ones to start pulling at to get the most out of your system. First things first, you really need to be asking yourself, what, what what's the target? Are you targeting 1080p 30 frames a second or are you targeting 4K 120 frames a second? Depending on which you choose, your settings could vary wildly. Now, for me, that target is 4K, 30 frames a second. Now I know what some of you are thinking, 30 frames, that's not enough, and to that I would say, don't be so sure. If you're playing fast-paced, competitive games like, I don't know, Call of Duty, Counter-Strike, you know, those, those kind of things, I'd agree with you that 30 frames a second is borderline unplayable. Now, I play a lot of competitive shooters over on my other YouTube channel, like and subscribe, and I do so on a 165Hz 1440p monitor. And the irony isn't lost on me that for years I've been that guy that obsesses over FPS on like Call of Duty or, or whatever, but on Flight Sim I am completely happy with 30. Now if you've gone all out and bought a 4090 and you've got a 4K 120Hz panel, by all means have at it, enjoy the amazing technology, but for a lot of people, myself included, it's more about finding, finding a balance. Would I take 60, 120? Sure, but I'm not gonna break the bank to get it. So what we'll do, we'll start with an ultra preset, see where we land, and we'll make changes from there. Okay, first up, DLSS. Do we turn it on or do we not? So firstly, just to briefly explain, DLSS is a proprietary NVIDIA technology, meaning it will only work with certain modern NVIDIA cards. So if you're running AMD, your choice here would be easy. You, you can't use it. So maybe you could use TAA instead. Uh, but to briefly explain what DLSS does, it renders your game at a much lower resolution than you're gonna be seeing it on your screen. So if you're on a 4K screen, it might render it at 1080p. Then it uses the AI tensor cores in the GPU to upscale that image to 4K. And it does it very, very well, in my opinion. Uh, in general, I'm a huge fan of this technology as oftentimes it's, it's kind of like a free boost to FPS without a huge impact on visuals. Um, I think it makes complete sense to put DLSS on um, simply because the frames without it on start to get a little bit on the low side. But the question then becomes, what settings do we use with DLSS? Do we do balance? Do we do quality? Do we do performance or ultra performance? Okay, so this was kind of uh, surprising. Looking at quality, you can see the frames per second on average a little bit lower than all the other three. But really, all the other three are basically the same, and that's because we're CPU limited. So really, I don't think we'll go ultra performance just because there's a little bit of shimmering going on on the edge of the wings there that I don't particularly like. But when it comes to balance or performance, um, to my eyes, I can't tell the difference. I'm tempted to go performance just in case we ever encounter a situation in the game in the future that maybe demands more of the GPU and if we're in performance mode, chances are we might get through it with uh, less dips in our FPS. Okay, so after that um, DLSS results, um, I think we need to talk about what it means to be CPU limited in a game. You might have heard this phrase before if you've watched a review of a processor or a graphics card on YouTube or something like that. Sooner or later, you're gonna hear the term CPU limited. So what it means is regardless of how many frames per second your graphics card can output, maybe your graphics card is capable of outputting a thousand frames a second, but your processor is only capable of processing 200 of those frames. Therefore, your frame rate is 200 FPS. That is a situation where you would be CPU limited because your CPU is limiting the overall performance. Your GPU is sat there, 
saying, I can do more, but your process is like, no, 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 I can only handle this much. So the next thing to look at is the terrain level of detail. Now this slider here can have a massive, massive impact on your performance, probably more so than any other setting we're gonna look at. So it's important to get this one right. Now, you can see with the level of detail here set to 100, there's almost like a visible hard cutoff where the detail stops. Now, if you look over at 200, you see that there's more of a graceful transition between where the detail is high and where it begins to fall off. Looking at 300, I struggle to tell the difference and 400 just tanks my FPS, so that's out of the question. So, I think we'll go with 200. That seems to be a good compromise between quality and maintaining the frames per second. Now, my decision making here may differ from yours. For me, I'm I'm a content creator, so I spend a lot of time looking out of the window of aircraft um, to make my videos and enjoying the scenery. If you're not a content creator, you might spend the vast majority of your time in the cockpit, looking at the instruments, that kind of thing. And you might find that 100 is uh, absolutely fine for you. And it might give you the extra FPS that you're looking for. All right, next up is the object level of detail. Now, I'm gonna leave this at 100, I think. I'm not entirely convinced that raising it any higher makes a, an appreciable difference to the quality that you see on screen. I mean, th there must be some differences, but I would rather not crank it to 200 and add the additional strain on my system. Moving on to building quality, and I keep looking at the comparisons here, and I think I prefer the ultra setting. But in any case, it doesn't seem to be a massive difference uh, in FPS, mostly uh, because at this point, I think I'm limited by the main thread on my CPU rather than my graphics card. So for that point, I'll, I'll, um, I'll go for Ultra. If you're in a position where you're not CPU limited and you're limited by the power of your graphics card, you might consider dropping this down. Okay, just to very, very briefly touch upon texture super sampling. Uh, I'm not gonna put any footage on screen. It's just a quick um, chat to address it. I cannot tell any difference beyond 4x4. I wonder if I can tell the difference between 2x2 and 4x4. I wonder if that's because I've got DLSS enabled. Now DLSS can sometimes clean up textures as part of their marketing when it came out a couple of years ago with DLSS 2.0 was that in fact some textures can look better with DLSS enabled than they do natively. So maybe there's something going on there. If you've got the hardware, feel free to crank it up, but I'm thinking I'm gonna set mine at four by four because I cannot tell the difference really anywhere beyond that. Moving on to waves, uh, you can see there's a massive, massive difference here between low and medium, less so between medium and high. So it's the same old story that, you know, from medium to high, there's less difference, but from low to medium, there's a massive difference. So once more, I'm limited by my main thread on my CPU, so my graphics card kind of has power to spare. So again, if you're trying to achieve a higher frame rate than what I'm trying to achieve, I'm only aiming for 30 here. You might be going for 60. Therefore, you might consider going with medium here if your GPU starts to become the bottleneck. Okay, so shadow maps, you guessed it, I am CPU limited once again, so it doesn't make a lot of difference which one I choose. I've gone with 2048, but uh, 1024 isn't hugely different, and if you want in the frames, 1024 is a solid choice, so perhaps keep that one um, as, as an alternative. Flight sim shadows, they're kind of weird anyway. In general, they're quite flickery and generally not great. So perhaps 1024 is a sensible way to go, I mean, maybe even lower given that even at 2048, the shadows still don't look great, so maybe just go lower for that reason. Okay, next up, terrain shadows. Now this one actually did make an impact for me, despite being CPU limited for a lot of the other settings. I found that dropping down to 1024 uh, really helped with uh, the FPS a little bit. I couldn't really see an appreciable difference in quality between, between 1024 and uh, 2048. I found that 2048 started to eat into my FPS a little, not by much, but it was there and I'd rather have those few extra frames spare to keep me comfortably above the 30 frames per second target consistently. So this one surprised me, um, Ray Marched Reflections, which is basically ray tracing. Now usually I don't like ray tracing in games, I find the performance hit too great of a compromise to justify the visual differences. To me a ray traced game looks uh, different rather than better. However, in the context of flight sim, they make a huge difference. And you can see here the reflections that you get in the water look night and day difference. And seeing as I'm CPU limited here anyway, whether I have them on or whether I have them off, I might as well just put them on. It doesn't seem to make a difference whether I go low or high, so I'm just gonna go with high. 
keep in mind if you're on a more uh, modest GPU, ray tracing might be a step too fast, so be prepared to turn it off or maybe go with low, but yeah, be, this one, your, your mileage may vary on this one. Uh, finally, I just wanted to touch on grass and bushes. I expected to get away uh, visually with going really low on this one, um, but it actually surprised me. I actually quite like a, an environment that is highly populated with grass. I think it makes it look a, a lot more uh, full and lifelike, especially during taxi takeoffs and landings. It's one of those where if you've got the horsepower, go for it. Um, otherwise, you could consider sort of going for a low medium setting. I wouldn't recommend off, it looks really sparse off. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go with high here. All right, we're back in Los Angeles, and as you can see, with all of our new graphics settings applied, we are comfortably above our 30 frames per second target at 4K. Now, that is 4K with DLSS, and I think it's worth mentioning that this entire graphic setup probably wouldn't be possible without it because even right at the start I, I was struggling a lot without DLSS on. I know some people don't like it and that's fine but for me here it's really uh, gotten me out of a corner and it allows me to play at 4k without having to essentially upgrade my system so I'm very very grateful for that. If you found this video helpful um, pressing that like button really helps us uh, really helps us out a lot on the channel it pushes the video to more people it pushes the channel to more people so that really really helps a bunch and feel free to sub we go live between two and four times a week with our full flights and other such content on the channel as well so it'd be great to have you along for those thank you very much indeed for watching and i'll see you in the next one